What's up everybody, Joshua Yale here, and let me tell you, deciding the 10 best DC video games requires superhuman stamina, because oh boy, are there a lot to choose from. DC Comics characters have been showing up in games since the very beginning, starting with Superman for the Atari way back in 1979, just one year after Christopher Reeve's iconic movie performance hit theaters. Since then, the number of DC games has flown up, up, and away, with over a hundred games in their catalog to date. And half of them are Batman games. Just kidding, only 38 are. DC's world of super-powered heroes and larger-than-life villains has proven to be good for everything from side-scrolling beat-em-ups to high-flying action adventures. They've made for games that range from family-friendly fun to disturbing crime thrillers, from cheap movie tie-ins to genre-defining masterpieces, and everything in between. When the world meets heroes, no one else is in their league. To determine our ranking, IGN's resident DC fans assembled to debate and shout about our favorites, not unlike all the DC villains used to do in the old Super Friends cartoon. Tired of stupid plans. Take care of Super Friends myself. Silence. The games had to be fun to play, obviously, but they also had to tell an entertaining story, be authentic to the DC characters we know and love, and capture the feeling of being a superhero. After much trial and tribulation, we've narrowed it down to the best of the best. So suit up, don't forget your utility belt, and let's dive into our list of the 10 best games DC has to offer. The first brick to build the foundation of this list is LEGO DC Super Villains. Yes, there are three other DC LEGO games, all headlined by Batman, and we know LEGO Batman 2 DC Super Heroes is a fan favorite, we like it too, but the baddies steal the win on this one. LEGO DC Super Villains incorporates all the great ideas that have made the LEGO game so popular, blending easily accessible gameplay with a silly sense of humor that has fun with the licensed property at hand. So Lex! As you can't be trusted at all, maybe we should ask the rookie to be our new boss. What sets DC supervillains above the rest is the voice cast. While LEGO Batman 2 was the first to feature fully voice acted dialogue, the third entry assembled a Mount Rushmore of familiar talent. Kevin Conroy as Batman, Mark Hamill as the Joker, and Tara Strong as Harley Quinn. Not only that, Nathan Drake's Nolan North is the villainous Ultraman. Getting to experience the best of the best doing their thing while enjoying puzzles and collecting is absolutely sublime. And shouldn't we try to find Superman? After all, he has more powers than you, doesn't he, Batman? As the title suggests, the story mixes things up by focusing on the villains. Traditional DC baddies are forced to defend the world from a group of evil Justice League knockoffs, the Justice Syndicate, which leads to all manner of enjoyable plot twists and humorous interactions. A highlight of the game is customizing your own villainous character all the way from their look down to their abilities, and then watching the creation you built become a part of the story. And with the game featuring not only DC locations Gotham City and Metropolis, but others such as Oa, Themyscira, and Gorilla City, LEGO DC Supervillains is a true representation of the entire DC universe in LEGO form. Batman the Video Game, released in 1989 for the NES, loosely adapts the story of the first Tim Burton Batman movie. That might have been easy to figure out based on the title, but that's about the only easy thing about it, as this side-scrolling running gunner or, or batteranger is infamous for its difficulty. The game features a selection of niche comic book villains that lead up to the Joker, including Killer Moth, Electrocutioner, and Firebug. But this game was so hard that most of the game's target demographic probably never got far enough to see them all. And anyone who did can likely attest that a dance in the devil in the pale moonlight was child's play compared to the brutally difficult final boss fight against the Joker. When this game came up during our meeting, the IGN staff who recalled playing the game all had thousand yard stares like soldiers remembering the war, or for a more appropriate DC metaphor, they looked like wealthy billionaire orphans reflecting on their parents' death. Please. Tell me that it's okay. But you might ask yourself, if this game is so tough, then why do we consider it one of the best from DC's catalog? Despite the difficulty, it channeled the gothic vibe of the movie with a moody and banging soundtrack, looked great with a bizarre yet attractive color palette, hello purple Batman, and had lots of wild jumping ninja action. 
it really did take you to Gotham City, as unforgiving and cruel as that place may be. Why should we trust you? Because if you don't, Earth is doomed. DC Universe Online is a uniquely ambitious entry on this list, undertaking the superheroic task of turning the DCU into an MMORPG. Launched in 2011 with the most badass superhero cinematic ever made, the game has been ongoing for over a decade and has amassed a dizzying amount of content, from character customization options and hideouts to stories and missions featuring iconic DC characters that take you to dozens of different DC locations. Simply put, DCUO is the most expansive and comprehensive version of the DCU ever created in a video game, and that's something no other title on this list even comes close to matching. You've lost everything. No, I beat you. <laughs> That said, DCUO is not without its flaws. The action gameplay is fast and loose, perhaps too fast and loose for some people's taste, and like other older MMORPGs, its visuals haven't exactly kept up with the times. Still, it is the only game where you can team up with Wonder Woman, zip across an open world at super speed as you run up walls and across water, and team up with your friends to take on raid bosses such as Brainiac and Darkseid. For all that, we can't help but rank it among the best options gamers have when it comes to enjoying the DCU to the fullest extent. Eight assassins after your head. What are you going to do? I'm going to find Black Mask. Batman Arkham Origins may be the black sheep of the Arkham games, but at the end of the day, it's still a decent Batman game. Instead of Rocksteady, this game was made by WB Games Montreal, which gave the game a noticeably different feel in gameplay and polish. The story is a thin excuse for Batman to battle against numerous villains and goons, but when you're doing it using Arkham's signature combat system, it's hard not to have a good time. In this prequel, the plot sees Batman as the target of eight deadly assassins who just happen to be villains from his rogues gallery, which explores some core Batman themes, namely his code against taking a life and his motivation for fighting crime solo. It also shows how he made two of the most significant relationships in his life, his partnership with Jim Gordon and his rivalry with the Joker. The story evoked the classic comic Batman Year One, which is certainly a praiseworthy comparison. Speaking of the Joker, even though this game uses different voice actors than the mainline Arkham games, Troy Baker delivers a standout performance as the Clown Prince of Crime. Other highlights of the game include a new spin on using Batman's detective skills to solve crimes, some serious upgrades to his combat arsenal, and an array of unique and entertaining boss fights against master murderers and a crocodile man. My father, Thomas Wayne, was a criminal. Everything I thought I knew about myself changed forever. Shifting gears from action to adventure, Telltale Games' first Batman game was no slouch in terms of spinning an intricate narrative, but its follow-up, The Enemy Within, is better in every way. The premise of Batman becoming personally invested in Joker's origin is more intriguing, the action feels livelier and looks more dynamic, and the choices you're faced with are far juicier, leading to permanent physical and emotional damage being done to the main cast of characters. By now, everyone knows the gist of how Batman's stories go and how his relationships form, but this game throws convention out the window and lets us make extreme, irreversible changes that have a big impact on the direction of the story. Essentially, this game lets you customize your own Batman story, and that's pretty dang cool. We're taking the Batmobile! We're taking the Batmobile! The Enemy Within makes good use of its mature rating, with the Riddler in particular going full saw mode, years before Paul Dano's did in The Batman. There's plenty of violence to be had as Bruce Wayne goes undercover and attempts to prove himself to a team of supervillains to join their gang. It's not a typical scenario we often see the character in, and it's full of tension created by fear of getting caught and for how it might forever change Bruce and those he cares for. The artistic design deserves praise as well, with the Batsuit looking sharper and cooler than ever and Joker's transformation becoming more and more unsettling as the story reaches its inevitable end. This meeting is now called to order. 
a quick aside before we continue, it goes without saying that Telltale's Wolf Among Us is also an excellent game, and some may argue it should be on this list because DC published the Fables comic it's based on, but we decided to leave it off because, technically, it was published under their Vertigo label and does not exist within the DC universe or involve superheroes like the other entries on this list. But we still wanted to give it a shout out for being awesome. Okay, moving on. gonna need backup. You're afraid. Injustice Gods Among Us takes all of the mechanical prowess of the Mortal Kombat games and adds in the bombastic superpowers and personalities of DC's heroes and villains, and the result is one heck of a fighting game. Developer NetherRealm Studios first tried their hand at bringing DC characters into the fighting ring with Mortal Kombat vs. DC Universe, which was flawed but filled with potential. Injustice fully realizes that potential, and then some. It's easy to see the game was made with nothing but love for the DC Universe, as the characters are all spot on from looks to voices to movesets, and they even acknowledge their opponent with custom dialogue referring to their comics history. We've all seen how much superhero battles affect the environment around them in movies, and Injustice plays into that by letting you crush your foe with a car or hit them so hard they're sent to another stage, cartoonishly knocking into hazards along the way. The best part of Injustice Gods Among Us is the story, which shows what happens when Superman falls to the dark side. An original idea? Not exactly, but it's the execution that matters, and Injustice does an incredible job showing DC's heroes and villains picking sides in a superhuman war, while playing against long-held relationships to drive up the emotional stakes. The tie-in prequel comic book series was equally excellent, something that's not always the case, and it fleshed out the story that laid the groundwork for the game's events. Injustice does have a few issues, like some bulky costume design choices and attacks that are way too over the top, even for DC, but it's hard to be too bothered by them with such a captivating story and extra crunchy fighting system. You're supposed to be my friend, which is why I have to stop you. While the first Injustice game was impressive, Injustice 2 elevated the gameplay, polish, and extra features tenfold. Not only did DC's characters look better than ever thanks to slick new designs, the new customization mode let you adjust those designs to look however you want. The cast of playable fighters expanded to include fan favorites such as Blue Beetle and Supergirl, heavy hitters like Darkseid and Atrocitus, and dream come true guest characters, the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, all four of them, and frickin' Hellboy. They're all brought to life with authenticity and flair, and the fighting mechanics are buttery smooth and brutally impactful, a marked improvement on the first game's already solid foundation. The story of Injustice 2 is enjoyable, but admittedly does not capture the same magic as the first. Hey, it's never easy to capture lightning in a bottle twice even with Raiden on the roster. That said, the plot does have its moments, as Batman is faced with new threats in the form of Brainiac and the Society, and is forced to consider turning to evil Superman for help. It's an insidiously delicious premise that makes for some truly outstanding character moments. Now, the Injustice games are both great, which is why they deliver a one-two punch right next to each other on this list. But even though the story isn't quite as good as the first one, we gave Injustice 2 the edge for its improved and endlessly fun fighting mechanics. Besides, the sequel has Dexter, the murderous space cat, and we have no choice but to reward that. Look me at your peril! All right, that was the first seven entries on our list. And let's be real, we all know the remaining three are the Batman Arkham games. But what order are they in? You'll have to stick around to find out. But before we get to that, let's highlight some honorable mentions. These DC games aren't top tier for one reason or another, but still deserve a shout out. Starting with Batman Arkham VR, which literally lets you suit up as the Dark Knight in VR and is totally awesome, but can be beaten in about 10 minutes. How about Infinite Crisis, which was a MOBA that only lasted six months, but made a lasting impression on me, at least, with some truly wild variants from the DC multiverse. You just haven't lived until you've seen Atomic Wonder Woman carving up the competition with her chainsaw of truth, an underrated gem in my humble opinion. Speaking of short-lived, multiverses looked promising in early access. 
Who knew DC's characters would make for such good Smash Bros. fighters? 2002's Superman Shadow of Apocalypse is easily the Man of Steel's best game for its super use of superpowers and capturing the essence of the beloved animated series. Kids have been doodling Batman and Superman in their notebooks for almost a century, so Scribblenauts Unmasked, a DC Comics adventure, was a clever and seemingly organic combination of that tradition with the hit puzzle game series Imaginative Mechanics. And our last honorable mention is Green Lantern Rise of the Manhunters. And yes, I know, I know, a movie tie to an infamously bad movie? What are you thinking? But listen, it actually has some pretty sick combat, and it's the closest any game has come to capturing the feel of being a Green Lantern. And by that I mean fighting with constructs that include a baseball bat, a Gatling gun, and the Hal Jordan special of Fighter Jet. Now, on to the Arkham Trilogy. Yep, number three on our list is the one that started it all, Batman Arkham Asylum. Hear me out. The framework of Batman's debut in the Arkham games transformed the superhero game genre with something that hadn't been seen before and hasn't been easy to top since. The phrase, it really makes you feel like a superhero, can often sound silly, but nowhere is it more apt than Arkham Asylum. The way its predator stealth sections invoke the feel of Christian Bale's spin on the Cape Crusader, taking out thugs at the docks in Batman Begins, complete with watching panicked henchmen fire wildly into the shadows, is downright uncanny. The decision to keep Rocksteady's introduction to the series solely inside Arkham Asylum was a stroke of genius, mixing Metroidvania exploration with action and stealth confined to grimy and claustrophobic claustrophobic spaces. It truly captured the oppressive nature of a prison for the criminally insane. Even more than a decade later, Asylum remains a standout experience as a must-play for anyone who's ever wanted to be the Bat. For the hero, the only true conclusion is death. This is how the Batman died. We put Arkham Knight before Asylum? Yes, we did. But this was not a decision made lightly. At least one IGN staffer left the debate branded with a bad symbol. I should really get that looked at. Just to show how closely these games are rated by fans, even the IGN community vote in our last Super Game video poll came down to only a 0.5% difference out of more than 20,000 votes in Arkham Knight's favor. But anyway, while Asylum's praise is well-deserved for creating the foundations of the Arkham series, Knight builds an extremely impressive experience on those foundations that represent the best aspects of what a superhero game can be. It even manages to twist the cliché of open-world bloat by presenting so many side activities as Gotham's rogues gallery pressing in from all sides to heighten the feeling of an overwhelmed Dark Knight. It is debatable whether throwing in a Batmobile tank was the best idea, especially one that can sneak. How is that even possible? But it is worth acknowledging how much the Batmobile sections help to add variety to the already excellent combat loop of detective work, predator stealth encounters, and bashing heads. Ah! Oh, no! An additional point in Arkham Knight's favor is just how well it presents a variety of boss fights, in addition to knowing when they aren't needed. Like Joker injecting himself with Titan, Rocksteady definitely had some growing pains during Asylum, while Knight has Batman facing off against several of Gotham's most wanted in more finely tuned and engaging boss battles. And being able to haul the villains back to lock up yourself and watch the cells fill might be just one of the most satisfying moments in the series. A lot can be said about this story. Like, was anyone really surprised by the identity of the Arkham Knight? If you're a longtime Batman fan, probably not. But as a longtime Batman fan, it also had some insane stuff I've never seen before. Like the Joker haunting Batman, appearing out of nowhere to psychologically torture him. It was brilliant stuff. I know everything about you. I know you are. Bruce we all knew it would end like this. Batman Arkham City is hands down the best DC game ever made. It took the superb, satisfying combat encounters and horror-tinged tone of Asylum and spread it across an entire city. This sequel grew in scope and scale beyond our wildest imagination, yet never lost its intimate focus on the Dark Knight's war on crime. And boy, is there a lot of crime. With Gotham City walled off and a supervillain gang war erupting inside, the game world comes alive with tension and danger around every corner. 
but with the extremely fun new ability to glide across the city and seamlessly drop down on goons like a bat out of hell, there's no place we'd rather be. Between side missions, bonus challenges, and 400 Riddler trophies, there's always something to keep you engaged. And this all makes the city feel alive and in desperate need of some cape crusading. I have powerful friends, Batman. You've become what you've always fought against, and I will stop you. The story is the best we've ever seen in a DC game, as voice actors Kevin Conroy and Mark Hamill deliver arguably their best performances and push these longtime arch rivals well past their breaking points. What starts as an admittedly over the top master plan by Dr. Hugo Strange of turning Gotham's slums into a city sized Arkham Asylum becomes a series of trials for a dying Batman that challenges him to see the humanity in his worst enemies and brings his long and bloody feud with the Joker to a bitter end. What The Dark Knight did for superhero cinema, Batman Arkham City did for superhero games. And for all that and more, it is undeniably the finest video game DC has to offer. Well, that's our take on the best DC games. Show us what your top 10 looks like in the comments. And for more rankings that'll drive you batty, keep it right here on IGN.